Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Nolan or the Optimistic Gamer here and welcome back to the Optimistic Survival Series. We are starting in the nether today because I was doing a lot of work since the last episode in our nether hub. As you can see right here, it doesn't look all that different, but with the deep slate that we had, I am out of firework rockets. With the deep slate that we had, I decided to bring that into the nether and use it for the nether hub which i actually did end up using all of it and we still need more so in the future i'm going to be spending a lot of time off camera in the branch mine so that will help with our diamond supply but also help me to finish this project of course this one goes to the swamp and then the branch over here that goes off to the right leads to the desert and then we also have those tunnels that go through the walls uh oh and that's why i am working on mob proofing and they are after me we'll see if we can attack them of course we might be okay if we can hurry into the portal here yeah we are fine but we will also have a portal that leads to spawn. We will have a portal that leads to the stronghold or a tunnel, I should say. And that will, again, kind of be more off camera work. I don't want to bore all of you to death. It is literally just digging out a tunnel and placing the same pattern over and over but we are not doing that today today we are actually going to make an enclosure for the axolotls that we collected in the last episode we were searching for those armor trims and we ended up finding some axolotls during our adventure we have a pink one and we have a white one i would also like to find a yellow one and a brown one today so that we can get all of those colors and breed them in an enclosure so that is where we are going to start so i have a few more buckets on hand and we are going to head to the location not of the desert lush caves but a different lush cave that i know of also this reminds me i did some afk fishing since the last episode as well i can actually go ahead and show you what i fished up Lots of treasure. I got a new fishing rod, which I have right here, which is fully enchanted, absolutely loving it, and we got all kinds of different treasures and whatnot. Lots of saddles, which is fantastic, and then some other fish and tropical fish. I mostly wanted puffer fish for some extra water breathing potions to have on hand but we got some name tags as well and all of that great loot a few enchanted books as well but i spent a lot of time doing that and the roof on the boathouse was not weathering at all but then i looked up and on the Minecraft wiki and I found out that if you space out the copper blocks they will oxidize a lot quicker than if they are all together. So I tore down the roof, took all of those blocks back home and placed them individually. Here's a picture of what that looks like and they weathered a lot faster. You can still see I'm missing a couple blocks but it's just about fully finished. I think I'm going to go one stage before this and have it I think it's exposed. I I don't know. I, I haven't memorized these stages of the copper weathering, but I think one level before that would look good for that roof, and we will get a layer of wax put on that and hold that in place. But the lush cave, there's one right over here in this incredible looking jungle cliff side thing right here and we are going to see if there are any axolotls swimming around in here of course being careful of all of these mobs around here as well we'll take out the creeper before he becomes a problem and this skeleton right here that keeps shooting me and i suppose i probably could have brought a night vision potion with me but oh well 
we'll just use the captions to our advantage. I'm not seeing any axolotls anywhere though, so this cave might be a dud. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they... Unless you've already scooped them up in a bucket, I'm pretty sure that they can despawn and respawn. So it may be worth heading back to the desert lush cave that we were in in the last episode. Oh, okay, I just saw on the captions that we do have an axolotl somewhere around here. So we will keep our eyes out for it. And right down here, it is another white one. We will go ahead and scoop it up though, just to add to our axolotl collection. And while I'm thinking about it, we will actually scoop up some tropical fish as well, because we will need them for breeding. And there we go, tactical fishing, got those fish, or at least one of them, we'll get a few more here. I would like to have an aquarium later on, but for now we will just focus on the axolotl enclosure. There is another lush cave, I believe somewhere right around here that I would like to check out. Here we go, let's see if there are any axolotls down in here, and I think this is another dud. There's another pink axolotl, we will scoop him up for now, but Again, I'm really hoping to find a yellow and a brown one because we can't breed to get them with pink and white axolotls. We could get a blue one, but we won't be able to get yellow or brown. We can also revisit the lush cave that I came to a very long time ago, I think for clay. I forget what we were building, but it required bricks. I think it was the barn build but we will check to see if there are any axolotls around here. And didn't find any, so I think we will head back to the desert lush cave. All right, well in my search for some more lush caves, I have come across a pillager outpost, and we are going to see it does have a laze, so we are gonna have to mark the coordinates of this outpost and come back to free those alays in the future, so Elytra definitely makes it very easy to cover long distances very quickly, so I went a lot farther than I probably should have, but we are going to check to see if it has the armor trim, the sentry armor trim. It doesn't, but it does have a goat horn and an unbreaking two buck, which we can... Actually, I'll go ahead and take it. We can always combine that with another buck, but it looks like we actually have two different cages with a lays in them which is fantastic. So again, we will be back here in the future. All right, I just saw another axolotl on the captions. We will see if we can find it. Right here we have a yellow axolotl. So now the only one we are missing is the brown axolotl. And if we can't find one, that's okay. Three different colors of the four is plenty, but it would be very nice to find a fourth. If we can't find a fourth axolotl, all of these diamonds all over the place will certainly make up for it. I've spotted four different veins now that I will have to go and mine. And I just saw a brown axolotl right over here underneath this drip leaf, if I can get up there. And there we go, we have all four. I'm just gonna confirm in the light that he is a brown axolotl. Yes, he is, okay. Just wanted to make sure. So we have all four axolot, well, four of the five axolotl colors, all four of the ones that we can find naturally. And the devs definitely didn't lie about making diamonds more common in the 1.20.2 update, as I have found 20 different, and we are gonna run away now. I have found 20 different diamond ore blocks. I just decided to silk touch them just for ease of carrying them it takes up less inventory space than having over a stack of diamonds plus we can use them in building in the future and here's another one so now with all four of our axolotl colors i will bring these home and we will start work on the enclosure now as many of you probably already know the blue axolotl is one of the if not the single rarest mob in the game and the goal would be to get a blue axolotl but in reality 
it's just not super likely that that will happen. However, the best way to increase our odds is just breed, breed, and breed some more. We are going to try to breed them nonstop and hopefully we don't end up with 1200 axolotls before we get a blue one, but we will just see what ends up happening. So for now, I'm just going to put them in the pond next to the old starter house and we will begin breeding them there and then we will relocate them as soon as we are finished building the main enclosure. So I'm just going to move the farm a little bit here. We will restore all of this back to normal in the future, but for now I just want to get them all in place right down here. There we go. So we have two pink, two correction on the cyan, not white, and then one brown and one yellow. I'm not really concerned with getting a certain color over the others so in terms of whether I will prioritize breeding a certain color of them that is not really something I'm planning on. For now though we will prioritize the brown and yellow ones just because we only have one of each. Uh oh and I didn't mean to do that I accidentally let loose one of the tropical fish so as you can imagine, the axolotls immediately devoured it. That's okay though. So we have a yellow baby axolotl here, and then of course they are all just swimming around happily. We will start work on the enclosure of our axolotl farm, I guess. More or less a farm. And I have started an initial design in creative mode, and I'm really excited for how this is all going to turn out. We are actually going to begin with a secret door that will be where our enchantment table actually is. So that's gonna require some redstone, so let me grab all of this and then we will head into our house. And I actually took the liberty of designing my very own hidden floor trapdoor thingamajig that you will see here in a moment. I'm very proud of it. There might be a more efficient way to do this, but please just don't steal my thunder. This is my first redstone, complex redstone design. I'm very proud of it, and uh, just let me have my moment. So I have pretty much all of the materials I'm going to need. And the axolotl enclosure itself is going to be under the house. Not under this little tower here, but under the actual house itself. It's going to go all the way down to about Y55. We are at Y99, so we're going down about 45 blocks to get to where this cave is going to be. On top of the door system we are also going to need some tnt that's what i will use to make a very natural cave look and in my creative test world i did check around to see if there were any caves in the direct vicinity underneath the house and there are not so i don't really want to spend a whole lot of time digging out a large cave so we are just going to use tnt for this and I have not really worked on a exit for this, so I don't really know how that's going to go, but I'm very proud of the entrance, so we are just going to stick with that for now. I'm going to remove the enchantment table just temporarily. We are also going to take away the floor, also just temporarily. We need to remove some of these blocks as well. That will give us a little bit more space to work with and I will just fly into this gap and we will grab some of those blocks. So the way this works is we have a hopper in a minecart that will be inside of this bookshelf. And when we throw an item into that, it will get pulled into another hopper, which will be detected by a comparator sending a one tick redstone pulse into a piston, which will pull a slime block, revealing the floorboard or exposing a gap in the floorboard where we are standing, again just for one tick, just enough time to drop us down 
into the hole where the cave will be, and then it will replace the floorboard once it has done that. So we will put a barrel right here, and we will get a hopper going into it right there. And I'm actually going to make a little bit more of a platform for us to stand on while we work on this next part. So we will have a comparator right here again that will detect the item going through that hopper and then a redstone dust coming out of the comparator and a redstone torch. That redstone torch will be on automatically which means the sticky piston that we will place right next to it will always be on just like this. Now, if we put an item in here, we will see, hang on. Okay, sorry, the item has to pass through the hopper. So if we throw an item into there, we will see that just for a moment, I'm not sure if that's one tick or how many ticks it is, but however many, it's not a whole lot. But that will temporarily pull away the slime block, which we will have that pulls away the floorboard. So let's get all of the floorboards in place now. Actually, let's go ahead and get the minecart hopper placed, just since we can place that from an angle. So we will put the rail right here and the hopper on top of it. We'll break that rail. Make sure we're not standing on that block because it will fire when that rail gets pulled through. And then the bookshelf right here with a piston facing down. Bookshelf, we will fire the piston. And that will push the bookshelf into that piston. And we are good to go in there. So now if we throw a block, uh oh, I didn't mean for us to actually fall through, but there's a great demonstration of how this whole mechanism will work. So now we just need to rearrange the floor a little bit. And I should also say the other challenge of this was the space that I had to work with. That's what made it most difficult. The concept overall is fairly basic. It's just a matter of getting it to fit within our enchantment area. That was my biggest challenge with this. The other issue I had initially was this slime block, which moves the floor back and forth, was pulling this stone when it reveals the floor so we couldn't drop through. The simple fix for that is removing the stone and using a spruce trap door right here. And then we just close that. It will still pull the trap door, but as long as we are standing on this side of the block, we will be able to still fall through. And from the outside, it looks like it's still sort of a part of the build. I tried a few different blocks that can't be pulled by slime. I tried furnaces and just different workstations, things like that. Nothing really fit in right there the way that that trapdoor does. Plus, it kind of makes it so you have to know the exact spot to stand if you want to be able to fall through, because if you are too far to this side, the far side, you will just stand, end up standing on top of the trap door. So let's go ahead and fill in everything with these slabs now, except for the middle block, because this slab will get pulled back towards the middle underneath the enchantment table. So with all of these blocks right here, and then we can replace the enchantment table. Now everything just looks completely normal. We can get rid of the piston right up there. Again, if we stand right here and throw an item onto the bookshelf, you can see we just fall on top of that trap door. But if we stand on this side next to the enchantment table and throw an item, we will fall all the way down. And it kind of pushes us a little bit, that slime block, but that's okay. Not a big deal at all because we are just going to wall in I'm going to have to grab some more stone, but we are going to make this hole just one by one all the way down. And from my testing, this has about a 99% success rate. I did notice very, very occasionally it wouldn't let me drop all the way through, but I don't think we will ever really run into that as an issue. So we can get rid of this shulker box now, and I think think we can go ahead and drop in. Actually, let me grab, 
Let me grab the slime block out of that because it's, as I mentioned, about a 45 block fall. All the way down, we are going to land on a slime block, and that is how we will safely get to the bottom. So let's go ahead and throw any item on there, the rail, and there we go, we will fall down here. Let's go ahead and start with the tower. Of course, we don't want this to be all the way up there because we don't want the slime block to push and pull. Not that it really matters, but we don't want that to be in the way. I may go back and do some fancy lush cave themed design in the future with this hole, but for now, we're just gonna keep things pretty basic and just use stone. And the biggest reason why we are going so far down is because right through the wall on this side is where our sugarcane farm is, so we are going a ways past that so that we can avoid any conflict there. So here we are all the way down at Y55. We will break that last block and replace it with slime. There we go. Again, no idea how I'm gonna get out of here, but we have all the materials that we need for now. And we will just start digging our way through here and making a cave, as natural as we can make it look. So we will place down a TNT, we will grab the flint and steel and light that, and then back away a little bit and try to stay safe. And then we're just going to repeat this process going in this direction and that direction until we have a somewhat natural looking cave. And we certainly have a little bit of cleaning up to do, but the cave itself is definitely starting to take shape. And this is probably about how big I will have this axolotl enclosure. It doesn't have to be over the top, but just something to give enough space for the axolotls to swim around freely and gives us a nice footprint for some aesthetic decor. So I'm going to run back up to the top, however I may do that. It may just be easiest to dig into the sugarcane farm and exit that way. And I'm going to grab some clay, some glow berries, and drip leaves, and all of the things that we will need for a lush cave aesthetic. We will bring that down here, build our own lush cave, and then relocate those axolotls to their new permanent home. All right, I'm gonna need a few more materials, but this should give us a nice start. And we are also going to probably want to stock a block somewhere in one of these chests that we can throw on top of that bookshelf. For now, I can just use stone. We have a lot of it. And here we go, let's test it out. We fall all the way down onto that slime block. We will bounce a couple of times before it's safe to just hold shift and land on that. I did staircase out right up here. I'll actually place a torch right in here into an old dig area where I used to source a lot of stone that we needed. I think what I will end up doing is just have a secret door over by our staircase that goes all the way down to the branch mine. Nothing over the top, just something hidden for getting out of the axolotl enclosure. So I brought down the clay that I had. We will probably need to go get more. I also brought a couple buckets for some water sources and then moss and azalea, all of that stuff as well. Let's go ahead and actually start with the moss. We will just place this down right here and with the bone meal, we can go ahead and spread this around to some of the other blocks in the area, which will transform all of that stone into moss and help with the lush cave aesthetic. I do want to leave some of this stone here and there. I kind of like that coal being mixed in as well. So we're not gonna transform everything, but a lot of it will be changed. And there we go, so that kind of takes care of all of that. Of course, it will be cleaned up a little bit more. The water source will be right there for us. That's where we will put all of the clay. We may have a couple up there as well, just different tiers, and that can kind of work its way down. As for the glow berries, we can go ahead and place these from the ceiling. We could 
bone meal those that will give us the light and then those will slowly grow we can harvest them and plant some more and then i have some spore blossoms as well we will place these strategically so that we get those particle effects kind of over here in this area and we have particles over that way let's place one more right here and we will put one over here in this corner as well so now we are really capturing that lush cave environment minus the water and a few more glow berries hanging from the ceiling but it is just about there so now i'm just going to remove some of this stone some of the moss and we will get this replaced with clay i did also read that axolotls require a two block deep body of water in order to pathfind to it so we will want to make sure that we have a couple of those here and there so now with all of the clay in place i can place down some of these water buckets and we can create that infinite water source and we will just fill in all of these pools around here with water i'll need to put a block under there so that it fills over and we will do the same thing right here as well just fill in the pools the aquifers and we can remove the stone from that so that gives them their two block deep water that they need and then the rest of these little gaps i'm just going to fill in mostly for aesthetics but also giving them a place to swim and then i also put one more right up there so we have the pools in place i may add one more over there but i did pretty much run out of clay so we will come back down here another time perhaps to finish that off so let's get some drip leaves put in place we will do a couple right here there's one and then maybe one more in the water we can get one put right over here in this corner of course it has to be placed on clay doesn't it or some kind of soil so that's not going to work uh, maybe next to it yes we can go right next to it that will be perfect and we can get one more placed right up in here there we go and let's go with one right there so this is a very nice enclosure now of course just waiting on the glow berries i do have some more up at the top i will grab those and bring them down here as well so let's head back down and add the finishing touches to the enclosure Oh, I missed, and I wasn't even standing in place. Like I said, 99%. So we'll get some of these small drip leaves put in place as well. I also picked up one more spore blossom that we can place right over here in this corner. So we will place glow berries all around the cave, and we will only bone meal them where we need lighting, just enough of course for hostile mobs to not spawn but the rest of them we will just let them run their natural course so now with all of the torches removed and all the glow berries in place i think we can pretty much call this axolotl enclosure complete so let me go grab the axolotls we will bring them to their new home let them get adjusted and call it a day so we should have seven axolotls now if i'm not mistaken it looks like we do and we will just scoop all of them up one at a time and we will take them back underground into the cave where they belong and here we go again i do also want to put a fence gate right here not because i'm concerned that they'll escape but you know just to keep them contained within this boundary just gives me a little bit more comfort of mind and we will let them free right in here and there we go the axolotls seem to be really enjoying their brand new habitat before i end it let's breed them one more time so i will quickly head to the ocean grab some more tropical fish and we will see if we can get a blue one 
Also, as for collecting any materials that I throw into that barrel, it's just as simple as wrecking a couple of these bookshelves and getting them out. Of course, it has a very high capacity and won't fill up for a very long time, so we should be okay in that regard. But I got a few buckets of tropical fish, and we will go ahead and feed these to the axolotls and see what we end up with. I'll try not to dump them in into the water this time. So they're gonna breed and we will see which axolotl we get, the cyan. So let's breed a couple more here. And a yellow one and then the two pink ones right over here. Actually, I'll do a pink and a brown. So there's the pink and the brown. And then they should breed, maybe. They're looking at each other. Maybe I'll give one more to the other pink one as well. There we go, and we got another pink. All right, well, no blue axolotl. We will definitely keep taking attempts at them, but I would definitely call this whole space a success. I'm very happy with how it all turned out our redstone door and all of that. I'll work on the exit between now and next time, but I'm just glad we have all of these axolotls and we were able to make use of them. But I really hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Optimistic Survival Series, and if you did, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on content as soon as I publish it. Check the description for some more important information, links, how to contact me, all of that stuff. And with all of that being said, comment, like, subscribe, remember to stay optimistic, and I will see all of you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Bye!